Okay, so if we want to use R, then we need, um, we need R. And of course, one way to do that is to go through a process of, uh, of downloading R onto your local machine. And um, then, and then um, getting it set up. And there's examples of, of how to go about this in uh, these notes, which I'll add it to the chat. Oh, I've lost the chat. That's okay. Uh, maybe if somebody can grab these notes, it's the R essentials and put them into the chat, please. And you can see how you can go about um, grabbing some of um, R, R Studio, and a little bit of background about R and R Studio. Uh, Liza Bolton is with us today, and Liza's got this wonderful description of the relationship between R and R Studio. And that is that R is like the engine of a car and R Studio is like the car itself. So there are some among us who are able to, to, to tinker with engines and things like that. Uh, but for most of us, when we want to get from A to B, we're going to go and we're going to use the car. And so that's the relationship between R and, and R Studio. R sits under the hood of R Studio. And so if you're downloading it yourself, then you will need to get both of those, both of those things, R and R Studio. Another way is just to set up an account with R Studio Cloud. Um, and for the purposes of this, you can just set up a free account um, that will be completely fine. And so you would just need to sign up over here, um, click for a, a free account, um, and it will just ask you to sign in, sign in there. Uh, in my own case, I'll just um, I'll just log in, and this should be fairly similar to. Oh, there's the chat. I'll just try and pull this across. There we go. Uh, so I'll be able to see your messages if you if you have anything in chat. Uh, and so what we're going to do um, when you log in, um, you should have a fairly clean workspace. And what we will do is we'll just uh, get started with a new project. So in your case, you won't have any of these three here. You'll just have this your workspace and we'll click and we'll get a new project. In my case, I'll just put it within this project. And so we're going up here and we're clicking new project. This takes uh, a few seconds. And what it is doing is it's putting together a folder for you. It's getting R ready to go, but it is a completely clean workspace. And what that means is that we're going to have to install packages. R works really well out of the hood. R is a statistical programming language. And so it is designed for statistics. And what has happened is that over the years, uh, people have written groups of, of code. They've put it together and we can just pull in that those collections of code through libraries. And so this is um, one thing that we're gonna do. But the nice thing about this is that what I see is exactly what you see. And so you will have exactly this. So we're gonna get started. Um, we're going to get right into it. The best way to learn how to use R is to is to use R. And so if you go up to file, new file. So again, um, I've, I've moved my mouse up, my cursor up, I've gone file, new file, and I'm going across to an R markdown file. I'll get into what all of this is, but just once more, file, new file, R markdown. That's going to load. It's going to require um, installing a few things, um, but it will it will work. So we'll click yes. So what this is doing is in the background. It's just um, it's just starting to, in, to install some things. So the reason that we're going to use an R markdown is because it allows us to add text and things like sections and um, authorship and um, and describe what we're doing as well as our scripts. Um, so we're able to combine natural language, so so descriptions and paragraphs and things like that, as well as our, our as well as our R scripts. And so that's that's one reason. Um, it's a nicer way to get started because it means that everything is in there. 
Okay, so if you're following along with our studio, um, it should have just asked you for a prompt as to a title. And so we'll just call it uh, Hello World. It doesn't matter what you call it. Um, you can always change it later as well. Uh, an author, I'll just put myself, Rohan. Again, you can always come back and change this. This is just the default. And for our defaults, we will start with an HTML output. But uh, for those of you who are in different areas, uh, you'll note that we are able to have PDFs and words as well. So we'll fill in these, these, these two um, aspects and then we'll click OK. And what that has created is an R Markdown file. You can see that the data that we put in, the Hello World and Rohan are populated already. We have a date. And so the code within this is R code and the code outside of it is, um, is the text. And so what I'd like you to do at this point is we're just going to get started by clicking knit. So we're moving our cursor up to the top here, the little um, ball of wool and a knitting symbol. And we're just going to click knit. If you're using it um, in the cloud, then it's going to ask you to save. And so we'll just say, um, we, can, we can give it a name of hello world. Save. Uh, now I'm using Safari and so it, it's a bit funny about pop-ups. Um, but it'll, it'll work once I allow them. Okay. And so what we've produced is an HTML document that says, hello world, and it's got an authorship on it. We've got some code and we're gonna get into doing some cool things with code in a moment. Uh, but you'll also notice that we have, a, we have the title, we have section names and we have text. And so this is one reason why we're using our markdowns is because it allows us to create those presentation, those, those sort of documents um, straight away. Okay, at this point, I'd like to turn to um, some of the code from the notes. So this is, again, it's in the Hello World um, notes. And we're going to first try to make uh, some, we're first going to try and make a graph of a recent uh, election in Toronto. So we actually had some by-elections in the, for the Toronto Council uh, a month or two ago. And so we're going to download that data and we're going to plot it. One of the really nice things about R is that we have really nice ways of plotting things. And sometimes a plot is all you need. Um, so I'll just pull this across so that you can see it. Um, but this is a quite famous example uh, where a plot was used to identify the cause of cholera. And what the person was able to do was identify the fact that there were some wells that, were, um, that, were, that were, had bad water and they did that despite plotting. Uh, of course, um, we're in the age of COVID-19 and, and many of us have probably seen this sort of plot. Um, and so in this case, we see with a logarithmic scale on the y-axis, uh, the case counts for several um, countries. So the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and my own country of, of Australia. Um, and so sometimes a graph really is all you need. And that's why we're going to focus on, on creating some graphs. graphs today. Okay, so we've, if you're following through with the, the, sorry, I'll pull this across. If you're following through with the instructions, we have, we have done most of this. Um, one thing that is good to get into the habit of doing is just creating a little bit of top matter. And so this is also going to be our first example of of, of comments. And so what we want is we want to get an R chunk. And so this is uh, the shortcut is command option I if you're on a on a Mac. Um, can somebody who's using a PC put in the put in the um, shortcut for PC please into the chat? Um, and what we're going to do at this point is just add some comments around um, around what we're trying to do with this, um, around what we're trying to do with this code. And so download uh, Canadian elections and make a graph. Uh, some other information that we may like to do is to um, add some sort of information around about who the author is. and possibly a date, um, some other things like that. And although it's a little bit unnecessary in this case, because we are using an R markdown, uh, I just like to try to encourage you to get into the habit of doing this. Uh, it's not gonna hurt, 
And if we get into the habit of doing it with, our, with everything, uh, then it will always be there. It just makes it easier to come back to these things later on. Okay, uh, now we're going to need to set up a workspace. Uh, so we're going to, again, make another R chunk. Um, so um, and so what this workspace is going to do is we're going to install some packages. And so I'll just um, type out the code. And you can see that RStudio is trying to help us uh, read the, the code. And so I'll just write them all out and then I'll explain what they're doing after that. You see how it's, it's popping up options here. And so at this point, uh, I can click on this. So I've hovered over this and I've clicked on that and it will complete it. Another option here is, uh, is for me to tab. So on my keyboard, um, so I'll just do that again. Uh, I, I started typing install and that it, that's the correct one. That's the one that I want. And so I hit tab. And so this is, it does have tab completion uh, for those of you who are familiar with those sorts of things. And one last one. And so I'm just going to run those. Uh, we have a number of different ways of running it. So this earlier code, because it starts with a, um, I don't know, what do you call this in Canada? Pound, it's a hashtag or a, or a pound, right? Um, I don't know what you call it in Canada. Pound, it is pound. Yeah, that's what we call it. <laughs> um, so because it starts with a pound, uh, this is a comment. Uh, whereas these lines do not start with a pound. And so this is going to run, this is going to run. And so one way to get a code chunk to run is to click the little green arrow key, and that's going to run. So what we're doing here is we're calling a whole bunch of code that other people have written. What this means is that our programs can be simpler and easier to read than they would be if we had to write it all out. And so the first one here, Tidyverse, is a collection of packages. Um, and this is a way of, of approaching things. And, and we can use a lot of Tidyverse um, options in, this, in these examples. The second package here is Janitor. And this is just going to make it um, in the same way that janitors help you clean up uh, your university or your school, uh, janitor, the janitor package helps you clean up your um, data sets. And finally, the here package just allows us to navigate our workspace a little bit easier. Okay, so this is running and you can tell that it's running because we've got this green uh, completion here on the left uh, telling us how far through it is. If we were to pull up um, some of the console, you could actually see what is, what is happening and you could see that it's running. We do get this thinking here. And so your R Studio pane, and this will be the same as, um, this will be the same um, for you. Um, so in our console here, we have a, an area where we can, beg your pardon. In the area here, we have a space where we can just type uh, code and we can save these as our markdowns. Uh, in here, we have a console. On the right bottom pane, we have a it's, a, it's a folder sort of idea. And in the top right pane, we have an environment. There's nothing in there at the moment, but we're going to very soon, uh, when we have a data set, it's going to live in here. And so the, it's all just installing. The installation of packages is analogous um, and, and Jenny Bryan, who works um, who works at our studio, used to be a professor at UBC. Uh, Jenny Bryan has this lovely analogy between installing packages and calling packages. And what Jenny Bryan says is that when we install a package, it's exactly the same as when we install a light, we, we screw a light bulb into, into a socket. But if we want light, then we need, to, we, need to, um, we need to press the switch, we need to turn it on. And so we only need to install the light bulb, we only need to screw it in, we only need to screw it in uh, once, but every time we want to use the package, we need to we need to turn on the switch, as it were. And the way that we're going to do that is uh, through the through I call it through library. It 
So these have been installed and so we can probably actually just comment them out for now. Um, the way that I commented all those three lines, um, I'll just do it again, was I highlighted them and then on a Mac, I said command shift C and, and that comments each individual line. Um, although of course, if you don't wanna do that, you can just go through and do the same at the start of each line as well. And so then we're just going to run this and that's going to actually um, turn on the light switch as it were. So this is the library call. So we're only gonna to need to install the, the, the package once, uh, but we need to call the library every single time. Okay, so now we need to download the data. And so we're going to just create a section here. Um, oh, sorry, just so that we're keeping our code uh, nice and organized. And so we're going to say this um, workspace uh, setup, perhaps. And if I was to knit this, um, with the one thing to do is to always just be making small changes and then always knitting. So if we knit it, um, what's it, the only thing it's going to do is it's going to be the same as before, uh, but it's just going to have added in a section heading of workplace setup. If we go and have a look at this, uh, we can see that we've got workspace setup. Uh, can I have a suggestion for another uh, section name in the chat, please? Anything? What's your? What, what should we call another section? Just so that you can see another example. No suggestions in the chat. We'll just call it, we'll just have um, genetics. Um, and just so that you can see that we've now created another section heading. We now have this. Okay, so let's uh, now create a new section and we're going to call it uh, gathering data. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, read in some data from, oh, sorry. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to read in some data from a website. And so we create an R chunk. And uh, what we're going to use is a function called read TSV. It turns out that the data set is, is a TSV. And we're drawing from the reader package. So this notation here, so this is saying, we're in the reader package and in this re in the reader package, we're going to use the following function that's read TSV. Uh, don't worry too much about uh, the specifics of the, of what every function is doing. Um, for now, we're just going to just try and take it as given and we'll try and get through this and then we can, we can always go backwards and fill in the blanks as it were. And so read TSV, um, takes one, uh, it takes a bunch of arguments, but we only need to put in one argument uh, for now. And that is the file that we want. Uh, and you can see that RStudio is helping us with the file, with the suggestion for the arguments. And so in this case, the file that we want, and it's a website, and I'll just copy it from the notes. It looks like that. And so we can run this. Uh, one way to run this uh, is to, again, uh, one way to run this is to go and click on this green button and we can just see what it does. Um, and you can see that it, it's reading in some things. Uh, in the case of this specific data, I happen to know that we need to skip the first line. The first line just happens to be just nothingness. Um, and so this is that argument of, of the first one. A little bit of magic, um, but just um, go with it. We're just trying to have some motivating examples here. So if we run this again, Uh, if we can, if we run this again, we can see that in this in this case, we have um, columns that are that are more meaningful than they were before. And so we're just skipping that first one. And so what has happened here is that we have our data; um, it, it, it's been um, read in, but we haven't called it anything. We need to give it a name so that that way we're able to refer to it uh, later. And so we're just going to call it uh, Toronto Council. Folks, and we're, we're using this assign arrow. So we're saying that this data set that we're going to read in, we want to call it Toronto Council Votes. So we'll just read this in. 
And then what will happen is that we will now have a data set up here in our data pane. And so we can go and look at it. Um, we know that it has three, 33 observations and there's, 40, uh, there's 14 variables. So that means that we have 14 columns and we have 33 rows. Uh, we can click on this. So again, I'm going to hover over it and then I'm clicking on it and it opens up and we can see what this is. Uh, in this case, we have various uh, electoral number, electoral districts. Um, those of you, I know that we have a rather diverse uh, audience, uh, but those of you who are in Toronto or know of Toronto uh, will realize that we're, we're dealing with the center of Toronto here and, and also York. So we can look at our data and this is great. We can see that we have some locations data. We have some uh, party data. We have some voting data and things like that. Okay, so we have our data. It's in call. It's it's in a. It's we've called it Toronto's Council Votes. Uh, so now we might like to clean our data. So we'll make another section, and this is just keeping everything nice and uh, neat. And this is where our janitor package is going to come in useful because you'll notice that we have some fairly funny names on our columns. Um, these are, there's nothing illegal about this, uh, but it just means that we, it, it's just gonna be a painter type. And so we're just gonna use the generator package. So we're creating an R chunk. This allows us to use R code, as opposed to if we, before we create that R chunk, uh, we're just gonna do type in normal code. So I'll just run this so that you can see what happens. Uh, you can see that we just got some normal text. Whereas uh, if we, I'll just leave this actually, and we create an R chunk, uh, then we'll actually be able to put in R code and that's what we're doing. Okay, so we're gonna use the janitor package and we're just going to uh, write over the top of, of it. Um, so those of you who are used to Stator or, or other languages like that, um, it, it's actually fine to, to write over the top of things here. Uh, oh, sorry. And, and what we need to do is we're just going to use the janitor package again. Uh, this notation is just saying that the function lives within the janitor package and the function that we're going to use in particular is clean names. And so this argument, uh, this function takes one argument um, that we definitely have to give it and that's the data. And so the data that we're going to clean is this data up here and it's called Toronto City uh, Council votes. So that's the argument. And so if we just run that, uh, then what we'll see is that our data set is uh, a bit more nicely named. And we can see that we, everything is lowercase and we don't have any spaces. Okay, I'm going to um, add in a bunch of code um, and we'll get to explaining um, all of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, just add it in below here. Uh, it's mostly just from the notes. And so what I want to do is I want to only have some because so some of our data here is is meaningful, but some of it is meaningless. So you can see these ones down the bottom are meaningless, we want to get rid of those. And so if we wanted to get rid of things, um, a verb, that's going to be handy. And this comes from the tidyverse package, a verb that's going to be handy is going to be the filter. We also have an awful lot of columns that we're not really using. And so if we want to uh, choose only some columns, uh, the verb that we're going to use is select. So the tidyverse package uh, comes to you and it, and it provides these helpful verbs. Um, I know that some people were asking, well, what is the tidyverse even doing? One thing it provides is these helpful helpful verbs for data manipulation. And so we've seen two of the, we're, we're about to see two of them, uh, filter and, and select. Okay, so we start with our data. Uh, we're going to filter to only um, include data, the filter to only include rows that are meaningful.
and we're going to select to only select certain columns. You can see that it's trying to uh, helpfully autocomplete this for me. So I'll just hit tab at that point. You can hit enter as well and that, that works as well. Name. So we're getting the electoral number, the electoral name, uh, the political affiliation, surname of the person, and the percent of votes, because I think that's what we'll actually, we'll actually use. Now, uh, I did lie, there's going to be a third verb. So we've had first verb, which is filter, and that is to remove rows. That's to, we've, we've had our second verb, which is select, and that is to remove columns or, or, or keep certain columns more accurately. And our third verb is going to be rename. And rename is just going to make these names a little bit less unwieldy. And so that's going to be, we're just going to call it writing number, whoopsies number or district writing district name variation so So this is just renaming things. Okay, and so again, we're just going to uh, call it the same thing as we did before. Um, and so we're just going to overwrite the name. And so if we run all of this, what we're going to see, what we're expecting is um, is that we're going to lose some of our observations. So we're going to reduce some of the observations and we're going to um, condense some of the columns. So we'll just run this. And indeed we see that we've got, we're down to 15 observations and five variables. We can have a look at that. And this is our data set. So we might just take a, um, a brief um, five minute break that's we're at twelve five minutes. We're at twenty five minutes, so we'll just take a five minute break, and then we'll come back and make a graph of this, and then we'll move on to the Toronto um, homeless data set. Um, I'll pause the recording, um, and so you can be a little bit more free to ask questions and um, deal with some of the other questions now. Um, but I will. But shall we start again in five minutes? Please. Okay, Ranesh. Uh, so. I'm going to leave the code up, sorry. All of the code is here. It's not letting me paste. The final bit of code is here. Is that the main one that you wanted? Which is the bit of code that you wanted? Uh, so, Ranesh, uh, so what we'll see in a moment, um, we'll get into the pipe operator a little bit more, uh, but this percentage uh, greater than percentage is what it is, is it, it's a passing mechanism. And so what it does is it takes whatever is on the left and you can still see my screen. Uh, it takes whatever is on the left and it just passes it as the first argument to whatever is on the right of it. In this case, the things are on different um, lines. I'll just move this uh, so that it's a little bit more obvious. So this, um, this pipe operator is taking this thing that's on the left of it, which it turns out to be a data set and it is passing it as the first argument to this thing on the right. What it allows us to do is it allows us to just write code that is a little bit more easy, that is a little easier to read. And that's in contrast to the, to, to, um, to the arrow, the, the left arrow, and that is assigning something as a name.
Okay, how are we going with our break? Uh, folks, anyone else got any other questions? Shall we get into it? Uh, resume share. Oh, did I, what did I do? Okay, so just to clarify earlier, could you see my screen when we were on a break? Yep, you can still see it. Oh, you could, okay. Anyway, okay, I'm not sure what's happened. Anyway, it seems everything's fine now. Okay, so when we left off, we had cleaned our data set, we had reduced it, and we are now about to plot it. Okay, so... Uh, what are we gonna do? We'll just, I think we can actually just go straight to this. So what we're going to... Uh, to is we're going to create a new section called make a graph. And again, we're going to want to create a archon. Ryan, and can you resume recording? Uh, I think so. Does it say that it's recording at your end? Oh yeah, no, I can see now, sorry. Yep, okay. Uh, and so the package that we're going to be using to to make our plot is going to be uh, ggplot. It's a bit of a funny name, but um, stands for the grammar of graphics. <laughs> There's a whole very interesting uh, paper that stands behind it, uh, but we'll try not to nerd out too too much. We'll try and stick to this. Uh, now, again, some of these um, some of these arguments are going to be a little bit unfamiliar, but AES is standing for aesthetic, and what that means is that it's we uh, ggplot wants to know what should go on the x-axis, what should go on the right, on the, on the y-axis. Oh, I beg your pardon. First, we need some data. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'll start again. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our data set. So, folks, and we're going to pipe it. Um, so the shortcut that I just used was Command Shift M, and what the pipe is doing is it is saying that take whatever is on the left of me and pass it to whatever is on the right of me. Um, and so in this, in this case, it's gonna be ggplot. So take whatever is on the left of me and pass it on to whatever's on the right of me. Now, in this case, the reason it sounds, it sounds a little bit silly, right? But the reason that we use this is because it allows us to have nicely layered have code that we, can, that we can read more easily. And so what, what this is doing is whatever is on the left here of the pipe is gonna be passed to the right. And this is in contrast to assign, which was our, uh, which was our left arrow, which is assigning something to a name. Okay? So they are two different concepts. So we're starting with our data set and we're piping it to ggplot. We're going to set some aesthetics. Um, the tabs and, and spaces do not matter actually. Um, so this is in contrast to languages such as Python. Uh, and so in Python, if we did this, um, it would be very different to if we did sort of that. Uh, in, in R, it doesn't matter. Uh, so for our x-axis, we might say that this is going to be our writing. And for our, our y-axis, we might say that this is going to be our votes. And finally, we might just like to color it by party. And so again, this AES is an aesthetic. The reason that it's called ggplot is because it's a grammar of graphics. And so in the same way, um, I have a I have a um, a twenty month old son. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear him in the background, but um, it turns out that that learning the grammar of English is very confusing uh, the first time you have to do it. Uh, perhaps some of you have learned English as a second language, and you can attest to this. Uh, and similarly, the grammar of graphics is also a little bit confusing the first time that you come to it. Um, but uh, if you just stick with it, it will make sense. And so what we do is we try and put as much as we can into this ggplot call. And then all we need to do is tell it what type of graph we would like, because um, a lot of graphs all share various um, similarities. Okay. So let's try and run this and let's see if this works. 
Oh, and there we go. Indeed, we get a prompt. We indeed we get a graph. It's always nice when things work, and so we can see that um, in terms of on the x-axis, um, the the blue party, which looks like it's maybe liberal, um, has received sort of forty-two percent or so of the vote in Toronto Centre, and in York Centre, it received perhaps forty. What are we going to say? Forty-five, forty-six percent of the vote. Um, okay, uh, I'll just. Uh, actually, we'll leave it there because we're going to see a lot more examples of ggplot in a moment. Okay, so I'll get rid of all of this. And so we can go through and we can add some text. So this is our graph of um, Toronto Council, um, City Council election results. This is me cleaning some up. So I'm just going through and tidying things up. This is me gathering the data. And all of these, all of these comments, uh, all of, this is all going to be text that's going to help it. Loading packages. And I'll share this with the with the these files. And so if we go and have a look at our, our markdown, uh, we should see that we have a nicely um, explained, well, recently nicely explained, um, gathering some, some political data, election data, and making a graph of it. In this case, uh, it was just a very small council election, so there's not too much going on, uh, but you can see how we could easily um, make this much larger. We could take into account the um, federal election and other things like that. But I might move on to, um, to the next stage, uh, which is to look at the Toronto homeless population. And so we'll make, again, we'll make a new R markdown. And the notes are just in that same file that I'm working from. I'll just add them in here, just uh, keep scrolling down. Okay, so we're going again, we're just going to make a new R uh, markdown. So this is file, new file, R markdown, and it should be a bit quicker this time. Because one of the things in, um, in our, it, one of the things about Toronto is that um, there's an awful lot of homeless uh, people around and it gets very cold here. Uh, and so, of course, um, with COVID and the cold, that's quite a deadly combination. So what we might worry about is, do we have enough space for all the homeless people to be able to get in out of the cold, but still maintaining appropriate social distancing between us? And in this uh, little case study, we're going to run through some data and the data is gonna suggest that we do not. So we're going to, in this one, uh, we're going to do the same sort of idea. Um, and again, you don't need to necessarily add these preambled uh, sort of comments. Uh, it's just sort of, it's good practice. It's a good habit to get into. And so it doesn't hurt to, to get started even in this situation when it's a little bit uh, superfluous. Let us uh, download, oops, download and plot some homelessness data. Uh, and I'll just add two other comments, which is the author to the date. But we can, we can, and so again, this this pound um, ahead of the line that is in that is telling R that it is a comment. It's not going to try and evaluate that. It's just going to print it. Uh, we're going to need a library, um, so. And so um, the library that we're going to need is just the tidyverse in this case. Now we don't need to install it because we installed it earlier. Um, if you were moving to a new computer, then you might need to install it, but, but this time we just need to call the library. Okay, now um, I, I guess we I guess you would have heard heard the baby then perhaps. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, so we're going to gather some gather the data. 
Uh, and so we're going to reuse a variant of our earlier command, and this is going to be read CSV. Um, and so again, we're going to we're going to call this data set Toronto Shelters. We're going to assign that name to whatever we're about to download. And so this time we're using a package called the reader package. So as before, um, same 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 package as before. It's reader, uh, but this time we're going to use a function called read CSV, and this is going to allow us to read in a CSV format. A CSV format, for those of you who are unfamiliar, it's a little bit like an Excel file. Um, that's sort of what you should have in the back of your mind. My understanding is that this is actually used in genetics um, a fair bit, these, these CSV um, sort, of, sort of files. So this, this might be something that's useful. And in this case, uh, I'm not going to try and type in this URL, but what this is going to do is it's going to just um, try and read a CSV from a URL. I will paste I'll just paste this entire bit of code into the chat. So what somebody has done is they have added this data set onto GitHub. And what we're about to do is we're about to read um, the CSV. And so one of the nice things is that we can give as an argument a URL. And so we're about to gather a whole bunch of data sets, a whole bunch of data about Toronto shelters. So we'll just run this current chart, which clicking the green arrow. And what we should see is that we now have a uh, data set called Toronto Shelters. We have um, 100,000 observations, more than 100,000 observations, and we have 13 variables. I can see that because I'm looking up in this environment pane, and that's telling me information, a little bit of summary information about the data set. If I want to actually see the data set, I can click on that. So I've just clicked with my mouse, and I can actually see the data set. So we can see that we've got some a date. So the data is actually laid out by day by, and by shelter. We have an address, so we could actually make some maps if we wanted to. Um, the province, so for those of you who aren't in, aren't in Canada, we're actually in Ontario. Um, that's just the state that we're in. Uh, but most importantly for our purposes for today is we have an occupancy, occupancy column and we have a capacity column. And just having a brief look at this, just eyeballing this, I, I hope you can see the details here. Uh, you can tell that um, already in Toronto, we're, we're actually quite close to capacity. So this first one has an occupancy of 16 on this particular day, and it had a capacity of 16. This second one had an occupancy of 13, and it has a capacity of 17. Another way, sometimes uh, I know in genetics, um, you have very large data sets. Um, so another way of just having a quick look at some data set is to just run head. And so head is another function. And what it takes as an argument is a data set. And so, shoulders. and so we can just run that if we want to. What that is going to do is it's going to print out just the first six rows of the data set and they've printed out over here. The equivalent, um, you can you can get the last six as well, of course, uh, and I, I think it's tail, um, so <laughs> head and tail, I, I think. Uh, if you if you're not quite sure about what a particular function does, so in this case, you know, I wasn't sure is is it tail, is it, is it something else? Uh, you can just type it out, and you can actually put a question mark ahead. So I'll do that again. So we we'll just type it out. You can't quite remember what tail does. Um, we can we can put a question mark. And then we can execute that. And that is then going to bring up this help help, um, help file. Um, and so that then tells us. And so this is going to return the first or last bits of a vector. Um, and so this is what we wanted. And so once again, this is just to get the help and information about a function. So let's let's have another look at, um, at head. Um, and so we do that. Pulls up this help. There's a question in the chat saying, do we have to specify the where the where the function is coming from? Do we have to specify the library that this that the function is coming from? And the specific question is, do we have to write it out like this, or can we uh, just write it out like that? And in this case, uh, this will work. Read CSV will work like that. And that's because we've already loaded in 
the library. Um, so within the tidyverse, um, read CSV exists within the tidyverse, and so this will work. Um, later on, um, as you go through your, as you as you start drawing on more libraries, more packages. Uh, sometimes you you may forget to to read them in at the top, and so it can be helpful just to be very clear about specifically uh, which which function you like you're you're interested in loading. Uh, and secondly, and so and so this this notation uh, allows you to not have to worry about the lib about specifying the library. And secondly, it just makes it very clear where it's coming from because sometimes um, some packages have the same name, and so we need to be clear about where about some functions have the same name. And so we need to be very clear about which um, package they should be drawing from. So there's two advantages to just being very clear about it. Uh, but in this case, no, you don't have to. Okay, so we have our data. Uh, in this case, I think that we don't, um, we're just going to try and what I'd like to do is to work out on each day, do we have some sort of um, average uh, occupancy? I'll just uh, delete all of this. This is the default content that came with the R markdown at the top. So create a new R chunk. And um, we're about to uh, we're about to add in another verb. So to this point, we've we've learnt a few verbs. They have been they have been uh, select and also filter. And so remembering filter was if we wanted to remove um, some rows and select was if we wanted to remove some columns. Uh, we're about to learn uh, another, um, another verb and that verb is summarize. In order to get there, we're going to need to, um, to draw in a couple of other things, uh, but uh, don't worry too much about these details. Um, and just So we're going to do Toronto shelters. So this is our data set. We're starting with our data set and we're piping it. So we're, we're pushing it, we're, we're giving it to our next row. And this next row is going to be just something that's going to get rid of NA values. Um, I'll explain what I've done. Um, why we're doing this um, in a moment once we have um, once I've um, once I've just typed it out so I'll just type this out and then explain what's going on this line and the next aren't the focus of the tutorial I will explain them And all of, everything that I'm typing out is in the note that was shared in the chat. And also this, this, this R markdown will also be shared and made available to you. Okay. So we started with our data set, our Toronto, data, our Toronto Shellers data set. And we passed that to a function called drop NA, which is within the tidy R package. Drop NA is just going to um, get rid of rows that have NA values. Uh, this is, we're just doing this just to keep things straightforward, just because it's our first, uh, well, our second uh, graph. Um, and so that, that's what's going on here. But this is just for a convenience. Um, don't worry too much about this. Okay, so now what we're going wanting to do is, you remember how if we have a look at our data set, for every date, we have a whole bunch of different values, okay? We have, um, so, so on this one day, so this is uh, the 1st of January, 2017, we have a whole bunch of different uh, capacities and, and occupancies. And what we wanna do is, we, I, just wanna, I just wanna know broadly in Toronto, if somebody, if somebody is homeless in Toronto, can they get a, can they get a, a place? So what we're gonna try and do is we're going to take an average, we're gonna summarize over those, um, over those dates. And so this is going to, what this is going to do is it's going to collapse our data set. And so this is what group by is doing. So it's going to group by occupancy date and sector. And sector will make sense um, in a moment. But basically what happens is that uh, in um, the, the shelters tend to be 
focused on particular types. And so there's some men's only shelters, there's some co-ed shelters, there's some that are targeted at families. And so this is what the sector is doing. And so what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is for each sector and for each date, we want to try and know what's the what's the occupancy rate. And so we need to construct that occupancy rate. And so this is our third major verb, which is summarize. And so first we're going to create a sum of all of the um, occupancy. And so what this is doing, and I'll illustrate it here, is it is for every date and for every sector, um, it is summing them. So, so co-ed, so we're getting 16. Um, this is another co-ed plus 14. And so it's going to summarize. It's going to sum those. Okay, then we want to know also um, the, the total capacity. And then we want to know um, the usage rate, which is going to be the percentage of those. So. Uh, this last bit of code that I'm about to do, um, this is just to make things a little bit neater in terms of how it prints out. Uh, don't worry about this groups equals drop. Um, if you're new to things, just it, all it's doing is just making things a little bit neater um, and meaning that we don't get a warning uh, message pop up. Um, okay, so if you'd like to, I'll, I'll put this, this code into the chat. Um, in case you are following along. And so we can run this and we can have a look at what's happening. And so you can see now for every date, for every sector, we have a usage ratio. So on the 1st of January, 2017 for co-ed uh, shelters, we had 91% usage. For family shelters, we had 89% usage. Uh, turning to the next day, on the 2nd of January 2017, for co-ed um, shelters, we had a usage rate of 78%. Beg your pardon, 79 after rounding. Okay, and so we've got our data, and so now we might like to make a graph of it. And so we'll make this graph, uh, and then we will take another break after we've after we've made this graph. So we're going to make a graph. So we're using our pipe operating. We're using our pipe again. So it's, we're saying we're going to take this data set and we're going to plot it. And so our familiar code as before is going to be ggplot aes. Uh, so aesthetic, and on the x we want um, the date. On the y-axis, uh, we're going to want the, the usage. And we're just going to color them by sector. So maybe we're particularly worried. We particularly think that perhaps um, women or, or youth or some, some particular sector uh, has you know particularly high usage, who knows? Um, but that, that might be a reason why we might like to color it by sector. And now we're going to introduce, so last time, we took this data and we gave it to GG point, uh, geom point, beg your pardon, geom point. Uh, this time we might like to make a line graph. And so the code for that, uh, the function for that, beg your pardon, is smooth, geom smooth. So what this is doing is it is uh, smoothing. I'll just copy and paste this in. Um, oh, thanks for that, Liza. Sorry. Uh, there might be something in terms of, there might be something in terms of Zoom uh, doing something to the chat. Okay. And so if we run this, uh, now we should get a graph. Uh, and so we can see that our, 
data is sort of um, is jumping around all over the place. Um, and this may make you think, oh no, well, we're, we're fine in terms of Toronto. Um, we don't have very high usage rates. Um, but actually, if you look at the y-axis, um, it turns out that we actually have extraordinarily high usage rates um, because you can see that the bottom axis here is, um, is actually 85%. So the lowest it ever gets is around about um, 86, 87%. And we have a lot of times when it's 100. Uh, if you plot the raw shelters, um, actually some of them go above capacity. Okay, what I'd like to do is to show you um, is, to, is to show you a few options for making the graph look a little bit nicer. So we're going to look at relabeling the x-axis. We're going to look at changing. The, uh, the extent of these um, of these of these of these lines, and we're going to add a title to it, and finally we're going to change the colors. Okay, now I did paste the code in. Okay, so you're with the code. You're with me with the code. Uh, at this point, the first thing that we might like to change is to change the, the y-axis so that it starts from zero, uh, just to make it very clear to people uh, what is going on. And the one, one way of doing that is to change this. Um, so this is just saying that the scale of the y-axis, it's a continuous, it happens to be continuous. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the limits of it. And this is why I, I titled my, my notes, uh, Telling Stories with Data, because for me, um, the data is just a way of supporting a particular point. And, and you're about to see just how absolutely um, dire the situation is. Uh, particularly those of you who are in Toronto, uh, you will know that it is, um, Certainly less than zero outside, and we would not want to be outside, but um, we certainly have a lot of COVID around, and so we would perhaps not want to be inside and so, uh, if it was too crowded. And so I'll go through and explain all of this. Okay. So if we just run so this first line that we added was changing the extent of the y-axis. And then we're going to change the labels. So the first one is at the moment, the colors, the label of the color is sector and we're changing it to type. At the moment, the label of the x-axis is occupancy date. We're just going to change it to date and, and so on for the, for the y-axis. We're going to give it a title, which is going to be Toronto Shoulders. And we're going to give it a subtitle as well. Okay, so if we run this, Again, going up and clicking on that arrow. I'll copy and paste this into the chat. And I'm aware that the chat's not, um, it might be mangling some of the code. Uh, you can also grab it from the notes, um, which are in the chat again. Okay, and at this point, you can see that um, the situation, if you're homeless in Toronto, is fairly dire um, because our occupancy rate, these occupancy rates are fairly crowded. Uh, one last thing, and, and I, I swear I didn't, um, I didn't set this up. I didn't realize that, that Liza was going to be here. Uh, but um, Liza actually went through a very nice um, tutorial yesterday, or perhaps the day before, um, as to how you can put together packages. You can actually put together your own um, packages. So we've just been using packages that were put together by other people. But one fun thing is to put together your own packages. And it's actually not as difficult as you may think. And Liza went through a, um, through a tutorial on how to do that. And her package, or one of the packages that she put together was uh, something to make the colors nice, nicer. And so the code that we're going to use to grab Liza's package and just go with me here. Oh, it was recorded, was it? Oh, excellent. Thanks, Liza. So Liza's just put the put the the tutorial um, in the chat. Uh, the code that we're going to use to grab the package that we're interested in from Liza is going to be DevTools. Uh, you'll notice that this is this is um, a function called install GitHub. We're giving it a location and we're calling it a reference, uh, but it is in the DevTools 
in the DevTools package. So we're going to have to install DevTools. That's not part of. So I'll just copy and paste the code in that you need. Uh, and so what DevTools is going to allow us to do in this situation is it's going to allow us to install packages from GitHub. And that's where Liza has, has, has shared her package. Uh, so we're just waiting for this to install. Um, and so I'll just, while we're waiting for this to install, I'll just try and explain a little bit more about the grammar of graphics. So we've, we've touched on it a little bit, but the idea is that what we're doing is we're building up layers. And so first we put in all of sort of where the data is coming from. In the next line, we sort of talked a little bit about the type of graph that we wanted. So we've seen an example earlier of geom point, of a dot point, and we now are seeing a line. And then we, then we add in more layers. Um, and so this has to do with labels and, and scales and things like that. Okay, it looks as though it has finished loading. So I'll just now execute this. And what this is doing is it's going to Lysa's GitHub and it is uh, downloading the package. And then in the same way as uh, any other package, once it's downloaded, so this is the equivalent of install.packages. Uh, so we, once we've installed it, uh, we then just need to call it. I will copy and paste this. And Liza's called her um, package December LB uh, for Liza Bolton, Professor Bolton. And so we're going to execute that. And so all of the code, and I'll, maybe I'll try and copy paste it from the notes, the entire section for this code becomes here. And so what we're going to do to change these colors is at the end, we're just going to add in a new scale. Uh, we have now, uh, thanks to Liza's package, we have scale color December, and we have a palette called Xmas. So we don't need to install package again. We don't need to install the GitHub again. Um, let's run that. And we should have a Christmas themed colored clock. And so what we've done in this tutorial is we've gone through, we've downloaded a data set from the, from the internet, from GitHub, um, and we've downloaded a CSV particularly. Uh, we're going to use, you, you'll find that you use CSVs uh, all the time. Uh, if you're new to it, then a CSV is just a, is just a version of an Excel. You can think of it as an Excel file. Uh, once we, once we did that, we actually summarized the data a little bit for our own purposes. And so we created, we worked out on a particular date for a particular type of shelter. Um, what was the occupancy rate, and then we created a line chart showing showing that the showing that the occupancy rate is is extremely high in Toronto. Uh, Justin has added a bunch of um, of other um, options around the around the uh, around the um, formatting of ggplot. I'm having some issues copying that code. Um, interesting. Um, but there's, there's a whole bunch of different things. And, and so adding in Justin's example would be fun as well. And the other reason that I did this um, example is, is not just because it is a Toronto example and it is, um, it is very cold outside, uh, but it's also because this was actually a, um, an example from a thing called Tidy Tuesday. And I said at the start um, that one of the good reasons for learning R is that we have a very supportive community. And one of the things that they run is, a, and, and I said at the start that the best way to learn how to use R is to use R. And so every week on Tuesday, they release a new data set. And um, Liza's put the link in the chat. Um, and so 
what happens is on Tuesday or, or any other day, it doesn't matter when, uh, but the community tends to come together and everyone shares some code. They, they have a go at this data set. And so we have some of the um, greatest minds um, all, you know, they, they might take a break from their day job and they, they, they analyze this data and they share their code. And so we had uh, two examples, uh, the two examples that my, that my examples, that my example today draws on uh, from um, Florence uh, Valley Dubois, who is a PhD student at uh, University of Montreal. Um, and I know Florence, but I, I and the other, the other person that the code draws on is a person named Lisa uh, Lendway. And, and I, I, I have no idea who Lisa Lendway is, uh, but she um, put her code, made her code available. And so in the case of Florence's, um, you can see her code there and you'll, you'll notice it's very similar to the code that we went through just before. And in the case of uh, Lisa, uh, I think it's Professor Lundway, um, you can see that her code is, is there as well. And so one of the nice things about R is that there is this community and, and we can grab and learn from other people um, what they're doing and, we can, and, and then we can use their code in our own, in our own work. And so that's what, that was the other reason for using this example. Uh, I might stop here um, and we'll do another five minute break. And then if people are interested, maybe we could do something um, fun and, and try and actually grab some data from Spotify. Does that work for, does that work for everyone? I'm going to have to, because I started again, I'm going to have to reinstall the Tidyverse, which will take some time. So I'll just. Uh, so renaming files. Um, so we can actually just do it within the package manager within the file manager of R, of, of R if we wanted to, and we could just click on it uh, and then we can click rename if we wanted to. And we can... Okay. Oh, the object, right. No, you're probably quite right, Liza. Probably that's what you meant. Sorry about that. Okay, sorry. So as I said, uh, I just need to, um, just reinstall the instance. For some reason, there was some something funny that happened. Okay, so the notes now um, are in are in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do something a little bit uh, fun, hopefully, and show you. Um, Try and motivate you, get a little bit excited about what's happening. And so we're going to create a new R markdown. We're looking to just call it Spotify, HTML, as said as before. Uh, now I'm just going to have to install the tidyverse. Uh, you won't have to do that as long as you're it didn't crash, which might do. Okay, so my, what I, where I am is here, and what we are going to <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to use Spotify to get some data. So, an API. Uh, I'm not going to belabor the point too much because I do want to end on time. But an API is just a way of gathering information from a computer using a computer. So in the same way that um, most of us probably navigate around uh, using a browser. And so that is a way of um, gathering data using a human. Uh, an API is, is allowing computers to talk to other computers, essentially. Spotify makes a very nice API available to developers. Um, and all you need to do in order to access it, and I'll walk, through, walk you through it, is a Spotify account, which, which I think that a lot of people do. Um, it, can actually, it can actually just be the free account. It, it, that, that's completely reasonable. Now, in the same way that in our earlier example, we saw and we used a package that Liza had put together. Uh, in this case, we're going to use a package that somebody else has put together. 
And so we're going to, um, in exactly the same way as before, we're going to copy this code. Uh, so DevTools install GitHub. So hopefully it's it's done installing the tidy first. Right, it has. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, uh, so we're going to. We'll just get rid of all of this introductory comments. Um, so we're going to um, first uh, download the R with a new section. Okay, create an R trunk, and we're going to try and install the package. And so it's exactly the same. Oh, I'm going to have to install DevTools. So if you don't have in the DevTool package uh, installed, we're going to have to install DevTools. And we're going to install the package that Charlie86 has made <laughs> for us. I'll just get that started. And then we're going to need to go and grab a Spotify developer account. And this is fun, right? Because if you just say you're interested in music, um, this is a great way to, to learn R, but at the same time, you know using some of your own motivations. Okay, so install, let's grab the GitHub account. Is this working? Has everyone else been able to um, install the package? Okay, so once, while that's, while that's doing that, we're going to go and um, grab a, um, at least one other person. So we're going to go to the developer dashboard. Okay, and I'll put that in the chat. It's there. And we're going to log in. And you can just log in with your with your usual Spotify um, Spotify account. Um, I will just need to go and grab my uh, there it is. Okay, so we log in. Uh, I'll, I'll just go through the whole process. So you can see I've got one, one example earlier. Um, if you've just created one now, then you'll, you'll need to create an app. So we're going through here. Uh, so we'll call it genetics uh, example. Just a example of gathering data. Okay, now what we need is um, firstly, this client ID. So we're going to copy that. Uh, and because what we need to know is Spotify needs to know that it is us um, requesting the data set. Okay, the way that we manage this is through, the, through something called the use this package. And when you run this, sorry, I'll just put this in the chat. Okay, so use this as part of the tidyverse. So it, it, you, you, you'll just be able to run it. Um, and what this is doing is it's going to allow you to save. Um, so when you run this, it's going to open this thing called your R environment. In that, what you do is you put your Spotify client ID and we're going to copy and paste those in. Okay. So I'll copy and paste those into the chat. Are folks, are folks okay with this? I'll go through and I'll do that again. So what we're doing is we're um, we're using the use this package and the edit the R environment. And what we're going to do is we're going to save our secret keys in there. So we grab that, uh, we run that. And what that does is it opens this thing called the R environment file. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to put our client ID in. 
there and our client ID is here. Now what I need to do is to be careful to not seeing as we're going to post this on the internet in a moment. <laughs> okay, so we copy and paste our client ID in here. And now what you're going to do and, uh, is you're going to click on this show client secret. It's going to uh, be a very similar sort of number to this. Okay. Uh, you're going to copy it, copy the client secret. So you're going to click on this, you're going to copy the client secret. You're going to paste it in here. Okay, I'll just do that off camera. Um, not that I don't trust you, it's just that I don't trust the whole of YouTube. Um, <laughs> Once that's done, uh, then you're going to save it. Save the R environment and then um, you can close that. Okay, are folks with me still sort of? Okay. Uh, so now what we need to know is we need to just restart our R session. So we're going to go session and restart R. Uh, once again, that is session and restart R. And what that does is it just allows us to use our new R environment. And as a reminder, again, what we're doing is we're just allow we're just telling Spotify who we are. Okay, so now we can use our now we can use our Spotify data. It's very exciting. Um, what was our earlier thing called? It was called download data. So we can um, this is going to be download data actually. We'll go download. So we can set up. Okay, so does anyone have a favorite um, favorite artist? Drake, oh golly. Let's, let's try Drake. So get artist audio features, that's a function within the um, Spotify package. Let's see if this works. Could not find the function. Uh, so what has happened is that uh, when we've restart R, um, it's actually forgotten that we had loaded we had loaded the Spotify R library. And so we just need to run that again. And we're also going to need to run the tidyverse because we're going to need that in a moment. So okay, so now we should be able to get some Drake data. Let's see. So what it is doing is it's going to Spotify. It's saying, okay, these are our um, these are our um, credentials and, and we're getting some data back. And look at that, we have some Drake data. So let's have a look at it. So I'm going to there and I'm clicking on it and we're getting Drake. Um, so we're going to need um, a bunch of different inf information, but uh, you can see that for this, this, um, for this song um, that was released, did, did Drake have a release on the 1st of May this year? Uh, you can see that it has various danceability, various energies, uh, various speechiness, a whole bunch of different things going on. Was the album called Dark Lane Demo Tapes? Ranesh, who, who said, who wanted Drake? Oh, there you go, right, there you go. So we've got Drake data, this is exciting. Uh, okay, so another person said, take on me. I'm like the nerdiest uh, DJ ever invented. <laughs> okay, uh, so take on me. Take on me. I didn't like that one. Um, oh, I see. A, a take on me is a song rather than a rather than a, a person, uh, an artist, right? Okay, let's just stick with Drake, and we will. Um, 
um, we can we can save. Um, there's a question in the chat. How can we save it? Uh, we can do, we can save it if we wanted to. We can save save RDS, um, and we'll call it um, the first argument of save RDS is Drake, and then we need to tell it where to save it, and so we'll just save it locally, which is going to be Drake dot RDS. Um, and so so there's a question in the chat as to how can we save it, so you can save it that way. Okay. Uh, so let us just um, let's just try and have a look at this in a little bit more detail. So we're going to use our our first um, first verb, uh, which was oh god, what's going on? Drake. Uh, we're going to because we have a whole bunch. We have thirty nine variables, right? So let's just select a few of them. Uh, so artist name, track name, and album name. Okay, so let's have a look at what that looks like. So we have Deep Pockets. Is Deep Pockets a, uh, an album name, uh, a, a track name within demos? OK, um, so that's looking pretty good. Um, and so we could make a, we can make a chart if we wanted to, perhaps. So same as before, um, AES. Um, Do I see the create an app button? Liza, are you talking to me? Well, sorry, that was meant to be a private message. Okay. Um, I can go back in and redo the create an app example in a moment. I'll just finish doing the chart, uh, doing the graph. Okay, so on the x-axis, let's put the album. So let's have a look at um, how long Drake's, Drake's um, songs are going for, album. Uh, release date on the x-axis, uh, on the y-axis, let's do, have a look at the duration. And then let's have a um, point. And so it seems uh, that perhaps Drake's songs are, I don't know, maybe he just doesn't have the really long ones that he used to have. Um, okay, what's another? Um, we'll we'll do tell. We'll do. We will do. Let's do. Let's do Taylor Swift as well. Okay, so one thing is um, the API gives us all of this information about the songs, um, such as um, danceability, energy, key, loudness, um, speechiness, which is how much talking is going on. Uh, and so one thing that we might be interested in is um, is is valence. Um, and so if you look at the API, um, valence is, is a measure of how happy uh, the song the song is. Uh, so we'll just grab some Taylor Swift dial and we will um, grab some uh, Drake data and maybe we can compare how um, happy each are. So as before, get um, artist uh, features. So that's going to go to Spotify and it's going to say, give us all of the data about Taylor Swift. Tell us everything that you know about Taylor Swift. Okay. Uh, and so now we can plot these two data sets. Taylor Swift data and the Drake data. Same. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a data set of the two different data sets. So we're just grabbing their names, we're grabbing their release years and the balance, which is the happiness.
Here we go. So from each of those two data sets, we're just grabbing the data that we need to plot. Put this into the chat in a moment. So as before, we're going. So that's just that's now created our data set that will create our data set. As before, we're going to have Trishi plot. Uh, we're going to specify the the x-axis, which we'll have as a year, a y-axis, which is going to be our balance, which is our happiness, and our color, which is going to be uh, yes, that's a good idea. Thank you, Andrew. And our color, which is going to be the name. And we'll then do geom point, and you can see who is happier. Uh, I'll just run this quickly and just check that it works before I share it and put it in the chat. And oh, it does. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so the request was Drake stuff and. Okay, so all we need from Drake is we need to get his data. Uh, this remaining Drake stuff was just us exploring Drake. Then we need from Taylor Swift, we need, um, we, need um, we need to get Taylor Swift's data. And then what we're doing is we're just creating a data, we're creating a data set of their individual data. And then we're plotting them. Okay. Um, one thing we might do is just sort of clean this up a little bit. Um, so again, we can change the um, themes. And we can be very clear about labeling our axes. So y is equal to new, is equal to balance. And color is name. So we're changing the same variables as we did earlier. And um, I'll ch and last time we used uh, Liza's uh, package, so we can try a different way of changing the colors, scale, color, um, and this is Brewer, which is just a different option. It doesn't, it's not a big deal. It just changes the colors. Okay, and so if we run that. Uh, so what have we got? So Drake, no, Taylor Swift starts before Drake. So Taylor Swift is in blue. And then if we're just looking at the blue ones, I think Taylor Swift is becoming less happy. Can I get, can I get a feeling in the chat as to whether you agree that we're, is there a downward trend in the blue line, blue dots, blue distributions? Yeah, I feel as though maybe Taylor Swift is getting less um, happy and I feel as though maybe Drake, there might be a positive slope here. I feel as though maybe Drake is getting a little bit happier. Anyway, um, the idea is that it was just meant to be a fun example of how you could get some data from a. Um, can we geom smooth? I mean, that's not a. That's not a. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Thanks, Liza. Um, so we're going to go pear shaped. The entire example is about to collapse, isn't it? Whoa, there we go. <laughs> Great suggestion. Thank you, Liza. <laughs> uh, so Liza's suggestion was to add in a smoothing. So, so what this is doing, general smooth is doing is, is, is um, averaging these things out essentially. Um, it's trying to fit a, a line of best fit. And so we can see that there's arguably a downward trend with Taylor Swift um, since around about 2014. And there's arguably a, um, an increase in, in Drake um, since about this similar time. And Justin is clarifying that Taylor Swift has many more songs about love and breakup these days, which I think is certainly enough to make anybody unhappy. The breakup is not anyway. <laughs> uh, so I'll just I'll just save this. Um, thanks for that suggestion, Liza. That was a good one. Uh, 
um, as uh, Spotify. And uh, that way I'll, I'll share these with the genetics group and they can, they can send them out if need be. <laughs> no, it was a great suggestion. Uh, what I might do is just share my, uh, stop sharing my screen and just try and make some concluding remarks. So just for a few minutes and then we can stop the recording and then we can take some questions if you'd like. Uh, so I just wanted to reiterate. So what we've done is we've shown how we can go out, we can grab some real data. Um, so all of our data sets were, were current, they were new, they, they're real data. And we can manipulate it to sort of tell a story. It might be as serious as um, are the homeless in Toronto um, able to safely um, get a bed or as frivolous as um, it, our Taylor Swift songs becoming happier or less happy over time. Um, or as, I mean, country defining as the, as an election outcome, um, all of that is possible just with a few lines of code and, and you could, you could go out and you could change these examples very easily. Um, so you could start with looking at a different election if you wanted to, but doing a very similar, very similar, similar analysis, um, just with just changing the election in the case of the tidy Tuesday example, um, you could look at, um, are there differences by religion? You could, you could just um, do very similar sort of answering, um, using very similar R skills, but answering very different questions. And similarly with the silly little Spotify example, um, you could of course um, look at a bunch of different artists. R is a statistical programming language and it allows us to tell stories with data. That's what it's really good at. And it allows you to express your creativity and, and it allows you to be part of a community of people who similarly use R. And I really get a lot out of that and I hope that, um, that you will too. Uh, if you would like to continue exploring some of these things, um, then certainly I would start with some of the readings in those notes. Um, what I've tried to do is to link to a whole bunch of other folks who have written up um, blog posts and sometimes research articles, but most of what I link to are blog posts and very freely available um, resources. And I would go there. Um, the best way to learn R is to, is to use R and, and use it for a specific purpose. So thank you very much to the organizers for um, inviting me along today. And I really enjoyed it. And I hope that you got something out of it as well. I'll stop recording.